Oh, right, and welcome to the channel. Hope you're all well. So, uh, we've just been walking around uh, Galish Hills today. Just uh, making a quick video around the area. Weather's not too good, but I was thinking to myself, you know, if you only just film when it's good weather, you're not really giving a good representation of what it's like here. Lovely old Victorian staircase, which leads down to the doctor's surgery. Yeah, here's one of the old mills here, it's uh, abandoned. You see half the house still remaining. And uh, behind this uh, mill here is an interesting building. It looks like an old chapel. I believe it's one of the oldest buildings in Galashiels. Let's uh, go and have a look. Yeah, you can still see the old lifting arms here on the side of the uh, the factory, the, the old mill. Yeah, here it is, here at the, uh, the rear of this mill here. Yeah, you can still see some of the, uh, the church windows there that have been boarded up. I wonder if there's any, any original features inside. Ask somebody whether I could have a look inside that old chapel. And uh, apparently he hasn't got the keys. But he did confirm it with me that that is the oldest building in Gala Shields. And uh, behind me here is uh, Hunter's Hall, which uh, is a weather spoons. They use an old chapel. It's the old post office, which is abandoned now. They don't use it. Magnificent looking building. Uh, they're going to waste. We're coming down uh, into Channel Street now. So uh, autumn's nearly over, or fall as it's called in America. Yeah, all the leaves have nearly fallen off the trees. So we're heading on to a uh, section of the Southern Upland Way, which runs here uh, through Gallish Hills. And uh, it takes about two weeks to complete the trail. And along the trail, there's uh, many, many little wild camp spots with fireplaces that have been uh, been made over the years. I'm just going to take you through a little small section. So we're just off from the Southern Upland Way. This is probably one of the most impressive fire pits in this little section that I'm going to film. Seating area around here, the fire would have been in the middle. Southern Upland Way is just on this uh, little ridge line here. What are you doing, Dave? I'm just going to get the drone out and uh, fly a little section of it for you. But uh, show you how I uh, draw it. Carry it around in uh, just a little rucksack. Fits in quite nice and snug with my uh, radio in the top. Radio always goes on first. That's so that when you turn the aircraft on, the aircraft always has something that it can pair to. If you don't want it pairing with something else and flying off, it's a good practice. First thing is you take the gimbal protector off. reverse threads and two are on normal threads it's so when the propellers spin that the threads tighten the propeller we turn the drone on and we 
we uh, go to the uh, to your device, your smart device. You can either use iPads or iPhones or Android devices. First thing I do is I uh, put on aeroplane mode. So it helps with the connection. And go to the DJI Go app. The first thing we do is we calibrate the compass. We do this by spinning it around on its axis. So if we go into the settings and calibrate. So when you calibrate the, uh, the LEDs turn yellow, you do a, a spin around like this. Green, solid green, and you spin around at 180. That's it until it starts to flash. Something nice and level for takeoff. Visual. Visual on this right here. Okay. Let's get her up in the air. Okay, so we'll switch to the drone's camera now. <laughs> so I'm talking to you with the audio on this camera, but I'm using the camera on the drone to film me. So let's go and have a look at this path up onto here, okay? Which diesel? Diesel! So the way goes up here into this wood uh, along the ridge line, up onto the top wood there, and over into the Tweed Valley, and onwards. And there's uh, there's a quite a few little campsites in these woods here. Okay, so we're on the side of Gala Hill now, just making our way back into town. Enjoying these beautiful colours for the, uh, the last few weeks of autumn. It's uh, quite mild today, so I'll just uh, turn you around.
So we're off the uh, side of Gala Hill now, back to uh, St Paul's Church here. An interesting door knocker. Yeah, so standing in front of the Freemasonic Lodge. <laughs> yeah, so everywhere you go in the borders here, there's statues of Scott yeah, yeah. everywhere. Gala Shields' uh, town motto is Sour Plums. Yeah, so there's the, the, the town's motto. Sour Plums. And uh, in the sweet shop here behind me, they sell uh, a type of uh, sweet called Sour Plums. <laughs> uh, we'll have to go and try one one of the days. Yeah, so another interesting fact about Gala Shields is that Gala Shields was one of the last towns in the borders to actually get plumbed uh, with indoor toilets. And there's a bit of rivalry between Hoik and Gala Shields, where they uh, call people who live in Gala Shields something to do with having toilets outside. But people in Gala Shields have the last laugh because Hoik got cut off uh, with the railway line being uh, abandoned. And Gala Shields has a lovely railway line uh, connecting it to Edinburgh. So I just thought I'd tell you that interesting fact. So during the Second World War, Gala Shields lost a lot of its original Victorian fencing and gates. They were sawn off to uh, be used as munitions for the war effort. But ironically, uh, they were never used and uh, they were just stockpiled. I think it was just something to do to boost the morale of the, uh, of the people. Yeah, so I hope you've enjoyed the video. And uh, I'll catch you on the next one, yeah? Talk. <laughs>